Hey there, it's Green Eyed Guide. Where do you get your caffeine? Do you drink energy drinks or do you drink coffee or tea or all of the above or none of the above? In today's episode, let's talk about a paper that studied trends in energy drink consumption between the year 2003 and the year 2016. We'll talk about how many people actually drink energy drinks and whether those people are in danger. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Caffeine at Midnight podcast, a short, no BS, science-based podcast for people who drink caffeine and work beyond the nine to five. I'm your host, Danielle Robertson-Rath, also known as Green Eyed Guide. I research caffeine, energy drinks, and fatigue in the workplace. I'm the author of Are You a Monster or a Rockstar? A Guide to Energy Drinks and How to Get Shit Done When You Feel Like Shit. Oh, by the way, uh, I kind of like the S word. Sorry. You can learn more about me, what I do, my books, my educational background, all that good stuff at greeneyedguide.com. For now, grab your favorite caffeinated beverage and your favorite note-taking app and let's do this. Apologies in advance if you heard the sounds of my bulldog or my baby in the background. I don't have a lot of time or a lot of fancy podcast equipment. What I do have is a lot of passion and the Anchor app allows me to share that passion with you, dear listeners. If you are considering your own podcast, I highly recommend using Anchor. It's completely free. You can record edit, and publish right from your phone, and Anchor distributes to Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, and all the other podcasts. You can download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. People who drink energy drinks get significantly more caffeine than people who get their caffeine elsewhere. That is the conclusion of a paper published in 2019 in the journal, sorry, in the American Journal of Preventive Medicine. This paper is titled Trends in Energy Drink Consumption Among US Adolescents and Adults 2003 through 2016. Again, their conclusion was that energy drink drinkers get significantly more caffeine than people who get their caffeine elsewhere, meaning coffee and tea. So, first of all, This data comes from a big, giant survey that you may or may not have heard of before, NHANES, which is the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. This survey is a major program from the CDC, basically, used to determine prevalence of major diseases and risk factors for disease. This data is used to direct public policy and health programs and services. This is this is a big deal, and they do this survey every couple of years because there's a lot of information we get from this data. It directs research. Like I said, it directs public policy. So in this case, the research used, the, the research paper written from this data looked at how people have been consuming energy drinks from the year 2003 through the year 2016. And their findings were that people that drank energy drinks had significantly higher total caffeine intake versus the non-consumers or people that don't drink energy drinks. Now, I have to mention here that I'm in the process of getting the full paper, so I can't really tell, one, what they're using as the definition of an energy drink. My guess is that it's probably just the stereotypical energy drinks, not the quote unquote energy drinks in disguise that I've been talking about on my blog and on this pad podcast for the last couple of years. So again, that's my first, uh, that's my first disclaimer. I'm pretty sure they're just counting the stereotypical energy drinks here. Second of all, I'm not sure yet because I haven't been able to read the whole entire paper yet, what they're counting as an energy drink consumer. So I'm assuming, based on how these surveys usually go, 
that by energy drink consumer, they're talking about people that consume energy drinks on a regular basis. So at least once a week or at least several times a month. We're not counting people that only have one energy drink during finals or, you know, have tried one energy drink one time in their life. Those people don't count. You may have had an energy drink once before in your life, but you are not a quote unquote energy drink consumer. So again, those disclaimers out of the way, let me repeat their summary. People who drink energy drinks have significantly higher total caffeine intake than people that get their caffeine elsewhere, like from coffee and tea. So as I mentioned, this NHANES survey is used to direct public policy and health and service programs. So their conclusion is basically, oh no, these energy drinkers are in danger because they're getting way more caffeine than coffee drinkers or tea drinkers. So I wanna talk about that. I wanna really pick apart that data and explain what that means to you whether you are a coffee drinker or an energy drink drinker, or both. Okay, if you've been following me, Green Eyed Guide, if you've been following my work for some time now, you probably know what's about to happen. I'm about to speak in bullet points, as my brother says. And here it is. There are three things you need to know about this data. Number one, it is true that the prevalence of energy drink consumption increased significantly. In other words, yes, it is true that the number of people drinking energy drinks increased significantly from 2003 through 2016. Fact. Fact number two you need to know. This is still a very, very, very teeny tiny portion of the U.S. population. For example, the percentage of adolescents, people aged 12 to 19, that drink energy drinks increased quote unquote, significantly from 0.2% to 1.4%. So in 2016, only 1.4% of adolescents in the U.S. are considered energy drink drinkers. For young adults, so people aged 20 through 39, the prevalence of energy drink consumption increased significantly from 0.5% of the population to 5.5%. So only 5.5% of the U.S. population aged 20 through 39 drinks energy drinks. And here it is for middle-aged adults, people that are probably already set in their ways when it comes to caffeine, people from age 40 to 59, energy drink consumers in that age group increased from 0.0% to 1.2 percent. So by 2016, only 1.2 percent of the U.S. population age 40 to 59 drinks energy drinks. Yes, the consumption of energy drinks increased significantly, but it's still a teeny tiny fraction of the U.S. population. And finally, the third thing you need to know about this data is Yes, it is actually a little worrisome because this data, data from the NHANES, from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, this data is meant to represent the U.S. as a whole. The sample is meant to indicate what people in the U.S. are doing and what they're eating, what they're drinking. And so as a representative sample, this data is a little worrisome because it suggests that adolescents, people aged 12 through 19, are getting more than twice the amount of caffeine they should have in one day. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, people under 18 should not have more than 100 milligrams of caffeine per day. And according to this survey, people that drink energy drinks are getting 227 milligrams of caffeine. So yeah, that that's a little worrisome. It suggests that people that drink energy drinks between the age of 12 to 18 sorry, 12 to 19, are getting more than twice the amount of caffeine they should be having in one day. So that is a little worrisome. Now, for the other age groups, it's not as worrisome because once you're 18, the maximum amount of caffeine you can have in one day goes up to 400 milligrams. That's the recognized amount as, you know, that's the safe amount of caffeine you can have in one day, a limit recognized by the U.S. FDA, by Health Canada, 
by the European Food Safety Authority and all the countries that pooled their data to provide the EFSA with their summary. So in sum, the scientific community with a capital S for science agrees that if you're an adult, you should not go over more than 400 milligrams of caffeine per day. And this survey, this, this National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, suggests that young adults and middle-aged adults are below that. Young adults who drink energy drinks are getting more caffeine than the people who drink coffee and tea, but they're still getting less caffeine than that magical 400 milligram limit. I should also add here, the reason that 400 milligrams is so magical is because that's a tipping point. If you go past 400 milligrams per day, that's when the side effects from caffeine start outweighing the benefits of caffeine. So that's why you're supposed to stay under 400 milligrams of caffeine or under four cups of coffee per day. And according to the survey, people who drink energy drinks are getting more caffeine than people that get caffeine elsewhere, but they're still under this 400 milligram limit. So we're okay there. That's not so alarming. Like, yeah, they're getting more caffeine than coffee drinkers, but it's still a safe amount of caffeine. We're okay. Adolescence is really the only age group that this data is a little alarming. Okay, we're at the end here. Let's summarize everything and tie everything up in a nice, neat little bow. In summary, this paper indicates energy drink consumption has, in fact, gone up between 2003 and 2016. The percentage of the U.S. population that drinks energy drinks is very, very low. So even though consumption has increased significantly, the percentage of the population that drinks energy drinks is still super tiny, like less than 5% of every age group. Now, for those people in that age group, for those, you know, for those 5% of the population that are technically considered energy drink consumers, are you in danger? Well, maybe, especially if you're a minor, because apparently minors are drinking way more caffeine than they should. But what our best course of action is from this research paper and from the NHANES surveys is for the FDA to take an action, follow Health Canada, and put a cap on the amount of caffeine you can have per ounce, or better yet, the amount of caffeine you can have per container. The FDA has already done this for cola beverages, so wouldn't it be wonderful if they also did this for energy drinks? There you have it. I hope this was helpful. Thanks again for listening. I appreciate you, and I appreciate your support. Have a great day. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would really appreciate it if you shared it with at least one person. Word of mouth works great. You can also take a screenshot or share the link on any social media channel you like best. Just remember to tag me at Green Eyed Guide. You'll also find a lot more information about me, what I do, and some freebies at greeneyedguide.com freebies. Take care. Bye-bye.